hello, Anna Sabramwitz here. And listen, everybody, let me talk to you about portfolios because I've been talking to portfolio people, building people for a long time now. And um, obviously with everything kind of moving online, moving into e-learning, there's a lot of talk about, you know, your own work, about having a portfolio, what is a portfolio, what is a good one, all those things. And what I wanted to do is give you some quick tips and um, kind of distract, you know, maybe differentiation between what is a good one and what is a bad one, okay? So um, I'd love to hear uh, your ideas. If you got a portfolio and you're proud of it, I would love to see that posted underneath. This is one of those times when actually, you know, sharing your portfolio is a good idea, uh, but basically giving feedback honestly about people's portfolios is something that I pride myself on. And the reason I do this is because I care about uh, making sure that you're successful, right? And to be honest with you, I've had, because I've run my own um, design agency for the past 10 years, there's a lot of people who uh, either finish school or they're transitioning from jobs or they just wanna work with me and they'll send me their portfolio. And uh, throughout uh, this 10 years, I've seen a whole bunch of work and I just wanted to uh, definitely make sure that you know exactly what it takes uh, to design a good portfolio, why you should invest in one, especially right now, and what to think about before you go full in and just go crazy. Because this is, you can be very, very strategic with this or you can be stupid with this. So don't be stupid with this. <laughs> think about all the things you wanna do and then consider the things I'm showing you right now after 10 years of basically looking at a whole bunch of work and giving people feedback so that you can make a better decision, okay? And and if you could just give me like a wave or something because last time I ran this, people couldn't read my screen because it was all backwards and I had to post all these pictures. So if you can see this and actually, this is bad. And if this is bad, this is good. So if you can see that, let me know. <laughs> all right, so e-learning portfolios. And I focus on e-learning here because um, other stuff is, um, you know, there's other people talking about other kinds of portfolios. My specialty is in directive storytelling and e-learning and scenarios, and this is where I feel I can give you the best advice. Okay, so here's some of the things. Some of the things about good portfolios that you're gonna see, that people are gonna actually pay attention to is the fact that you took the initiative to kind of, you know, say, hey, I'm gonna build these skills up, I'm gonna put together something concrete, and that looks beautiful on a resume. I don't care how much experience you have, you gotta just show it up to the job and then a good job for about, you know, hey, thanks for being that, that's awesome, yay. <laughs> you could have showed up to a job, you know, and people say, I have 14 years experience. Uh, that could be you for 14 years, learning something in the first six months and then just doing the same thing over and over and over. And then you leave that job and you're like, by the way, the world owes me something. No, but when you put together a portfolio, it shows that you have initiative and that you care about your work, about your own creative showcase, right? So a portfolio is a good showcase about initiative. The other thing that gives you is creative freedom. This is crazy, right? When you work with other people, when you work with stakeholders, all those other things, it's a team effort, right? So that's good, and that's good to have a mix of pieces that you did collaboratively, because showing you're a team player is actually really important, because um, uh, if you're a hermit and you don't like to work with people, your interactive stories are gonna suck, because you need to talk to experts and practitioners to actually create really meaningful stories. But the thing that it does is it allows you to choose your own illustrations, your own graphics, you get to be more fun, you get to have more fun, you get to create the kinds of experiences that represent more of your ethos, your you, your kind of creative, you know, je ne sais quoi. So this is your chance. So instead of creating something that, you know, you'd see like a dime a dozen out there, this is your ability, portfolio gives you the ability to do what you want, represent your personality. And that's huge because that's what you bring to the table is you, right? People aren't looking for a generic anything. They're looking for you. Well, and they're, whenever they're looking at your portfolio, they're not only evaluating whether it's good stuff, they're also seeing if you're a cool, normal human being. They're gonna, the, all they're thinking is, is this person gonna work well with our team? Do I want to hang out with this person after this call or after this you know, interview? That's what they're thinking. So let your personality shine through. This isn't a time to be holding back. This is a time to be, this is me, baby. This is awesome, right? 
The other thing, ownership. Just had a question from this, from one of my clients said, you know, I have all these portfolio pieces, but they're all from my work and they're all branded with that, you know, um, that works, you know, stuff, right? And so it's like, do I get to share that? Do I own it? Well, if you have your own portfolio, you really can create pieces that represent you, your work, and you own them 100%. You're not relying on somebody else to give you permission to use that stuff. And guess what? If you've created pieces that are branded and you can't use them, well, if you're pretty savvy, you can create your own interactions that use that same type of interaction and engagement scenarios, just change the names and remove the branding, but it's an interaction and you're showing that you can do that in, in a meaningful way, right? So I hope that's making sense. All right, and if you wanna say hi, Go for it, this is live, and if you have questions, post them, I will answer them. <laughs> All right, the other thing is, ah, this is lovely. Actually, you know what, let's, let's, you know, we're all going into the good, why is it good? Let's talk about some of the bad sides of portfolios, because I want, this is, this is bad, right? I've seen this so bad. Context, portfolios where people just dump a bunch of stuff in there, they're like, look, look, I did this, and they just like, they put it all in there. It's like a it's like a shoebox scrapbook of stuff. And then I'm supposed to go through and dig through this whatever. And I pick up a piece and I'm like, okay, well, uh, what is this? What part did you play in it? Why did you make it? What's the context, right? So one of the things you want to do is a bad portfolio will have no context for your pieces. You want to be, if you have just one, case study of your piece of work that says, listen, these are the pieces that I did on it. This is the kind of work I did on it. These are some of the challenges that we face. This is some of the problems that we face. That is gold. Now I'm seeing your thought process. Now I know you're not just like recreating random things because there's a challenge on. You're actually thoughtful. You're strategic. You are making connections between the goal and what you're creating. I, I want to see that, right? So that's what a good portfolio does is it adds context to your pieces. If you lack context, I'm just going through like pieces as if I would be in like a magazine without really seeing all the work you put into it. So if you did that, make sure it's there. Make sure people understand why you selected a piece. Amateur. So Sometimes I'll see some pieces and and I get it like when you start designing your own e-learning or your own pieces you you're moving from a progression of what's really good right or what you're starting with and then maybe two years later you're you you're as you get through your projects right you get to something awesome now here's the thing people think more is more no more is less <laughs> Because what happens is if I'm seeing your crappy first project and now I'm seeing your awesome uh, last project, I'm still, I've still seen your crappy first project. Do you know what I mean? I don't need to see that. I don't need to see all of the options. What I want you to do is curate. Curate your best work. Because every single piece says something about you, right? Your skill set, your thinking, your strategy, your collaboration, your efforts, everything. And so you want to put the best piece in there. So don't put 15 pieces that suck. Put one piece, really say why you're proud of it, and that will speak for you. And choose that one piece carefully. The other thing I suggest is just because you built something three years ago, that doesn't mean you should not actually incorporate all the learning that you've put in, like done in the past three years, and hopefully you have been upping your skill because if you're not up in your skill, if you're not doing this, you're doing this, right? You're going backwards, right? So if you're if if one of the things you're doing is improving your skills and you have a piece that you developed three years ago, well, this is what would be amazing. You go back to that piece and you reimagine it with new learning and then you write a case study about it. You say, here is a piece I did three years ago. But through my three years, you know, I've been learning how to do interactive stories. I've been learning how to really talk to experts to pull out scenarios. I've been really doing all these things to improve it. And so what I did is I revisited my previous piece now. I can see all these options I could make and now go back and improve it. And here it is. Imagine that. Now that to me is showing that you're you're progressing. So I would even show to say this is me thinking three years ago this was awesome but now I've incorporated these pieces because I've thought it through. Oh and I have a comment. 
Praveena says, I'm taking my previous projects and recreating some parts of them as a part of my company portfolio. I love that. You don't have to start from scratch. And actually the fact that you're showing that there's an evolution and saying, you know, I've taken some older projects that meant something to me, but now that I've reflected on it, I'm actually adding some skills. Beautiful. I love that. That means you've actually invested in yourself to grow. Otherwise, if you're showing me pieces from six years ago and they look like you did put them together six years ago and you haven't thought about them since and you're still proud of them, that means for six years you've just been doing the same thing over and over and over and you think the world owes you something, right? That's not the truth. All right, so this is the other thing. When you create your own piece, you own it. It's yours. You can share it anywhere you want. You can publish it anywhere you want. It is your piece to share. And that's one of the things that uh, what happens with a lot of people is they, they don't want to rebuild. They don't want to create their own pieces. They just want to like take screenshots of old projects. And then what happens is you don't really own that piece. You don't, you can't really say that you do, right? So you want to own this piece. And I mean, do you have to? No. Is this my advice? Yes. Have I seen some tons of portfolios? Heck yeah. So this is my heartfelt advice to you as far as what to really do when you want to create a kick-ass portfolio that's going to, you know, take you to the next level. Is it going to get you the job you want the first time you try? Probably not. But imagine if you're the person that inspires, you're the person that solves a problem out there. Guess what? That's going to make a difference, right? Okay. And this is a big one. This is what I want to talk to you about. I have client attraction on both sides here, right? And I've talked about this before, but I think it's very, very, very important because I just recently looked at a bunch of portfolios. People have sent me, they're like, check out my portfolio. And I'm looking through it and I'm like, okay, well, this looks like one a box full of chocolates. They're all flavors, all kinds of flavors, but it doesn't really tell me what you like to work on and what you excel at. It just shows me a smorgasbord, right? It's like a buffet. And that's great. Some people like the variety but I like to work with professionals and experts, right? So it's like, would you choose a plumber who also was a painter, who also was a doctor? Would you go to a doctor who also was a painter and a plumber and did all things part-time? Like you wanna to talk to somebody who is like, this is my thing, this is my passion. I wanna kick butt, I wanna help people, right? So your portfolio piece, in a sense, is even though you're, you're definitely using it to acquire clients. A lot of it is like you showing off an ad, saying, here's my thing, here's what I do best. And what do you think about that? Like, is this attracting you? And the people who resonate with your style, resonate with your kind of humor, resonate with your visual design, resonate with your strategy, right? Those are the people that when they look at your portfolio, they're gonna be either attracted by it or repelled. And you definitely want people to be repelled as well. Because if everybody's saying yes, right? That means that nobody's, nobody's really saying no, which is not possible, right? You gotta polarize. Not everybody's gonna be into the Porsche. And in fact, when people walk into my dealership of e-learning products, I don't want everybody saying yes. I want the people who are like really into it saying yes. And the people who are just like wanting content dumps to be like, no, nope, this, this person obviously doesn't do any of that crap. This person does this. This person's doing the Tesla. That's the kind of stuff I want. So your portfolio represents more of the work you want to do. So if you put out info dumps and you show info dumps to people, guess what? You're going to attract people who want more of that. But if you're like, listen, I've done info dumps all my life, but now I want to do something that actually changes behavior. Now I want to do something that's actually fun. Now I want to do something that's super visual. I want to do stuff that's scenario based. I want to do that. I want to break all the rules. I want to do stuff that will make me happy and will be make me proud. Guess what? Your portfolio can include that. Just that. It's, it works. It absolutely works, right? So what you put out there will either work for you and attract more of the same. So you gotta be careful about what you're putting in there because it represents, it's gonna attract the kind of people who want that or repel the kind of people who don't want that, right? And the other, the last piece I'm gonna finish with because I'm going on and on here. I hope you're finding this helpful. By the way, 
I'm live, so if you want to ask me any questions, because if you're developing your own portfolio, now is the time, right? This is the best time to be in e-learning, seriously. So whatever you're hearing on the news, you can either crawl under the duvet, or you can say, this is the time for me to seriously upskill. This is the time for me to invest in myself, sharpen the tools, because when it hits, when everybody wants it, there's gonna be a thousand, 2,000 people going for the same things, and only the people who are creme de la creme, who have been preparing, who have been thinking about the next step, because life will go on, those are the people who are gonna kick butt. So you gotta, you gotta make that decision now, okay? So here's the other thing that your portfolio will show. Random skills or mastery. And I'm not saying, like if you think about your typical project, right, e-learning project, there are so many things that go into creating an awesome piece, right? You gotta be able to work with people. You probably guys can think of all kinds of stuff. You have to be able to work with people. You have to be a good project manager. You have to uh, not only source information from experts, but then talk to them and pull out the stuff again. Uh, you have to be good at writing. You have to be good at scripting. You have to be good at uh, laying things out, uh, visual thinking. Like, there's just, right, really, right? All awesomeness. And, and that's why I think we're actually in one of the best professions ever, because you can really just shine in those areas and you maybe collaborate with others in the others, right? Where you want to be the best. But this is the thing. If I'm looking at your uh, portfolio, right? And you've got 20 different PowerPoints and job aids, 20 different, um, you know, kinds of like training sessions, random workbooks, uh, random e-learning, uh, screenshots of activities, like pick something where you want to be a, an absolute expert at and showcase that. That does not mean the other pieces are not important or that you can't do them. But the thing is, I bet you that if you did more of the projects that you wanted to do, and you could then next time say, you know, I've actually really gotten good at this thing, and now I can offer it as a product. We call this in my community, scope first design. If you can now say, I've done this, it's awesome, I can produce it in two months, and a month sometimes, how about, do you, do you want something like this? That's where it gets beautiful because then you can start, instead of refining from a blank space, you can now iterate on something that you've already perfected and then perfect it even more and perfect it even more. Think about that. So it doesn't mean you'll be like, no, I don't do job aids. You can, but the thing that makes you get up in the morning and you're passionate about and you can really add a lot of value in is this. Maybe it's interactive storytelling. Maybe it's scenarios. Maybe it's micro video. Whatever it is, decide what that is because then that'll be the feature the feature of your beautiful the centerpiece of your beautiful portfolio and then when people come there they'll know what is this person about where does this person really shine ah i see it like that should be clear to me i don't want to see a box of chocolates i want to see like a giant egg caramel egg or something <laughs> i don't even know you know what i'm talking about <laughs> I just recently had to order chocolates for a fundraiser. Anyways, it's just ridiculous. So um, I got chocolates on my mind. So I hope you found this helpful. Let's just do a quick recap, okay? Just quickly for those of you who joined late or who are watching this after. Also, if after the live you're watching this and you have your own questions, post them. If you have a portfolio and you want some feedback on it, post it. I might be able to actually check it out. Why not? That's a part of being part of this group, right? We're trying to get kick ass at this. So some of the things that are good about portfolios that you should consider, it shows you've got initiative. You're refining your own skill set, right? Gives you creative freedom. You're putting out there what you want to put up, what represents you, what de demonstrates what you think is the best learning experience that you're creating for your audiences, right? Gives you ownership of that piece. It attracts the kinds of clients, if you do it well, that you want and gets you more of the work that you want, right? And it shows mastery and it forces you to develop mastery if you do it right. Now, here's some bad stuff. You could post stuff in there that has zero context, just a bunch of stuff. And I have no idea of all the work and effort and thinking that went into it. And I dismiss it as any other 
accumulation of screenshots, right? If you have work in there that no longer represents your current skill set, or it looks like these are all the things that you currently do, it makes you look like an amateur. Professionals cater, curate, make it look pro. What I'm looking at is I'm looking for that. Have you thought this through? Have you curated the best pieces for me? All right. Lack of ownership. So one of the things that happens is you don't really own the stuff. And that's, that's kind of bad because then you have to ask other people permission to see if you could maybe, you know, own it or share it, create your own, recreate your own. If you know the strategy, it's, it's better to have your own because then you can share that complete experience without anybody saying a, a goddamn thing about your thing because it's your work, right? And uh, if you do it wrong, you'll if you put, out, put a, just a smorgasbord of stuff on there without refining it, what, you'll, what will happen is if you put out crap work in there without thinking about what the kind of person it's going to attract, it's going to attract that person. So don't put work in there that you don't want to do just for the sake of showing off that you did all that work. It's not worth it. Those clients are not worth it. And then, you know, random skills. Like I said, pick a centerpiece, something that you really want to get good at and do more of and make that your portfolio centerpiece. So, oh, we have a question here. All right, let's see. My business partner and I bring different skill sets to the table. I've decided to stick to scenario-based learning, interactive storytelling, love it not even including level one e-learning as a part of our offering. I absolutely love that, to be honest with you. Because guess what? Anybody can do level one, right? And, and even when I think about level one, I'm just like, ugh, right? <laughs> because if I got like 10 of those level one projects, which to me is kind of like, do you, do you want to be cheap and fast, right? And I'm like, I don't want those projects. I want people who like really care about their learners. I want people who really care about doing a great job. And I want people who want the next level. Those are, because those are the quality of clients I want to work with. And it's a different kind of environment. And I hope you agree, Pravina, is that some of those people, when you work with them, they're really a pleasure. They actually make you happy to work for them. They make you excited to, and they come back because you like you've created a relationship where both of you are on the same page as far as effect, quality and all those things. So that's super awesome. Love that you mentioned interactive storytelling because to me that's the next level and also like we know it's a segue, right? Into other experiences that are more um more impactful and behavior change inducing, right? So that's awesome. I love it. Yeah. And exactly what I said. Don't include things you don't want to work on. Include the things that you want more of and you'll attract more of those things. And if it repels some people, some people will come to you and say, I want level one. And you'll be like, this store doesn't sell level one. We only do two, three, four, six. <laughs> All right. So those are awesome. I really appreciate your engagement here. This is great. These are great questions and comments. I appreciate that. Now, if you come up with your own questions or if you want to share your portfolio to get some feedback, this is the time to do it. Put it underneath the video. Thank you so much for stopping by and I hope you found this useful. If you did, and you know somebody who's working on their portfolio right now, I hope you share it because we're here to help each other. All right, take care everybody. Bye.